Today what we'll, we'll do is we will have a, uh, a roundtable discussion. Uh, we've got uh, five panelists who I'll introduce in a few moments. But we will work best if you have uh, good probing questions uh, on the, the topics that we'll touch on. So uh, please, I encourage you to, to uh, catalog your questions and get them ready and help us to move the panel along. Um, in terms of who's here, Lynn Walding um, is the uh, administrator for the Iowa Alcoholic Beverage Division. Iowa is a control state. We'll talk a little bit about control states and open states. Uh, Lynn is uh, renowned on the, uh, uh, the symposium route. He's spoken often, and I've seen him in a number of presentations. I'm sure he'll give us uh, some good insights about uh, the regulatory community and control states and otherwise. Uh, Tom Wark is the executive director of the Specialty Wine Retailers Association. Uh, these are the barbarians at the gates, uh, ready to, uh, you know, give us new insights of how, about how wine will be distributed uh, uh, in the United States. Uh, Jim Rowland, Vice President for Government Affairs for Wine and Spirits Wholesalers Association, um, lives with me down in Washington, D.C. area. He represents the, uh, the middle tier of the three-tier system in terms of distributors and wholesalers uh, who uh, distribute uh, beverage alcohol products throughout the United States. Steve Ray is a managing partner with Brand Action Team. Uh, Steve's company is a company that works on numerous types of uh, uh, marketing programs and advice and counseling to uh, new and existing entrants in the beverage alcohol field and I assume other fields as well. So. And John Baudet is president of uh, MHW uh, Limited uh, here in the New York region. Uh, John is a member of our association. Uh, he also has a distinction of being uh, the company that made all of these wines coming to you uh, throughout the um, Italian Trade Commission exposition possible. Um, what we'll talk about today is a, an overview of uh, some of the issues confronting importers uh, particularly, um, not necessarily just Italy, but uh, uh, clearly we'll have some uh, tilting towards some Italy situations and, and trends. Um, how consumers are shopping today. Uh, towards the end of the program, we'll talk a little bit about how people get information uh, about uh, wines that they'd like and end up uh, buying, and clearly we're going to talk about the distribution system and how that might be changing. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but just in terms of the existing uh, infrastructure that we have in the United States, as Bill uh, indicated before, we've got this three-tier system, which seems to be, uh, for many people we speak to overseas, somewhat intimidating. But the reality of it is that there are systems in place uh, to make it quite easier and, uh, to, to access these markets. Uh, Bill also uh, alluded to direct shipping. And uh, while it is limited right now to domestic wineries, there are programs in place right now that do address the foreign wines. <clears throat> and what it's likely to entail would be importers will at some point be given uh, some I think benefit similar to what a domestic producer would be. They'd have the responsibility of importing the products and then the ability to direct ship to consumers. I think that's coming at some point only because clear. When you talk about the distribution system in America, there is, has been a tremendous consolidation at the wholesale level, as you all know, I'm sure, as well as the import level. But there are companies out there that assist wineries. And the most important thing is to get educated as for those of you that are new to the United States, coming to a program like this is very important and being active at the trade shows in America is a very, very good way to learn how uh, ultimately easy it can be. Uh, again, it's not, don't be intimidated by what you hear. Come and actually get to know the people that are involved in the industry. Tom, uh, should importers be supporting uh, liberalized direct shipping, Tom Moore? <coughs> of course they should. Um, but let me just move back to um, with regard to the three-tier system. Everyone here understands that the three-tier system is a state-mandated program that's essentially a jerry-rigged program that was built to accommodate the liquor trade of the 1930s. Yeah, I, I believe the original question was, does the three-tier system help, help or hurt uh, Italian winemakers? And obviously, uh, we, would, we would tell you that we believe it definitely helps you. Look, this is the most competitive market in the world. It's the most profitable market in the world. And we are the ones who are most able to help you take advantage of that. Uh, we have the greatest economies of scale that enable Tom's folks to have the, their great economies of scale. Um, we have global transportation logistics, meaning that we can take the wines, get the wines from you, and get them into Tom's stores. Um, who else does that? 
um, and we also have the local marketing expertise. We help Tom's folks um, with, their, with, with their product lines. We help on-premise folks with their wine menus, with their pairings, um, with, the, with wine tastings at places like uh, Tom represents. Uh, we, we believe we are the most efficient way of getting this done for the greatest amount of people. If you have a good product uh, that people want, that you've created demand for, that you're selling at a good price, reasonable price, you're going to get into distribution. I think I uh, challenge your historic perspective in that the three-tier system was not designed to accommodate the needs of the wholesale tier. It was really designed to protect and, and take care of the needs of, of government. And as the revenue were in the room, it's about tax collection in large part. Uh, it's a way to make sure that the taxes are properly collected on a controlled product. It's also about vertical integration. We did not want to model, as we led into prohibition, that allowed one tier or one, one branch to control all distribution at the retail level, the wholesale, and at the production level. So we wanted to separate those tiers out to create that, that barrier. Uh, it's also about creating a level playing field so that everyone is on the same, same page and, and playing by the same set of rules. And so that's the, the overall intent. Now what's interesting, I think, is the technological changes and how that is challenging that structure and how we as governmental entities are going to either accommodate that or, or work within that, that structure. System. The question is, how can you as individual wineries trying to come to the United States find a way to work within that system? One of the barriers to entry has been this consolidation both on the distributor and the supplier side. And they're being less and less interested in bringing in new suppliers and taking risks, if you will, on some of those things. So the question is, within the interstices of the three-tier system, how can you bring a brand in here? And I think it boils down into two categories. One is real distribution, and the other one is virtual distribution. And talking about the technological change, that's really what we're talking about. Um, Steve made a reference to Amazon. You know, uh, once Amazon gets going, uh, I can assure you imported brands are going to be an important part of their portfolio. I know that for a fact because uh, we're working with them on the import side of it. Uh, Typically an internet retailer is going to need about 11. They're going to need a picture of the bottle, they're going to need a picture of the label, they're going to need to know the alcohol content and retail price and, and all that kind of stuff. And that, that's pretty standard. Amazon's going to want a lot more information because they want to get the content there. In terms of big uh, wine companies uh, from Italy, uh, they, they continue to dominate the top tier of the top companies who are bringing wine in the country. So these aren't small companies, but uh, the top ten companies, uh, clearly Italy is there. You can scan the barcode of any product using your phone's built-in camera. Shops out there will then find all the best prices on the internet and at nearby local stores. Because this is in fact a political argument more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows that there's going to be regulation within the American alcohol system. Um, and I don't want to leave the impression that members of our organization don't want any regulation. We would like to be well regulated. We understand the value of wholesalers. What I think some of us take issue with is the fact that there, there's a state mandate that wholesalers be used. That's where we differ. More information is better. More information is better for the suppliers. More information is better for wholesalers. More information is better for retailers, the more educated the public is about your product, the more likely you're going to build a following and create a smashed product. And thank you for your kind words. Let me just tag on what Tom was saying. I, this gentleman here raised a question, do, do, as is the title of this presentation, do consumers get what they want or want what they get? And I think you could ask another question, and that is do citizens get the laws they want or get the laws that they have? And I think in both cases, ultimately, consumers are going to get what they want, <coughs> and we're going to have the laws that the people want. And so uh, it, it, there is this discourse to form. And I think this, this panel like this are useful in helping everyone understand the issue and then work out what, it, what the compromise will ultimately be. So uh, I think you, this was a, a great panel, great discussion, very timely topic. And I hope you uh, go away with at least the thought that the, in your press packet there's a brochure from the National Association of Beverage Importers. Should any of you importers seek to uh, get membership, we'd be happy to join our ranks. Uh, and uh, have a great uh, rest of the Vino 2009. <laughs>